Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back again to online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about different structural system, the evolution of structural system for high rise buildings uh, and also we have seen some nice example from the history as well as from the modern world. And then we summarized uh, that lecture uh, with a note that whatever the structure available, it has uh, four different types and uh, as per uh, uh, the council on tall, uh, tall buildings and R1 habitat, but uh, if we cluster them into uh, based on the location of the structural member, then we have uh, discussed that that can be divided into two categories. One is your interior structure, the other one is exterior structure. So, in this lecture, we will be discussing on high rise structural component part 1 and preliminarily we will focus on uh, that interior structure, what are the structural type and we will try to see some examples, uh, real uh, already built uh, buildings where this kind of structural system being used. So, let us start uh, lecture number 37 that is um, the structural component for high rise building part 1. And uh, at the beginning of uh, this presentation, if you can uh, identify the city skyline, this is from the New York. So, you can see that how beautiful the structure looks like, so all vertical members and there is little bit alternation to the form and then finally, it is making a skyline for the city just uh, you know in front of uh, the water body and how beautiful it is. But uh, not only aspiring the beauty. Uh, we should also know the structural component so that we can also think of to develop such and at least to know uh, the mechanism, the structural uh, mechanism, the way these buildings are built, uh, at least the typology of the structure. Uh, at the introduction, uh, definitely uh, uh, we discussed in just in the previous lecture that mainly two kind of loads are uh, acting on building. So, in that type one is your vertical load or the gravity load, here you can uh, see just a minute, yeah. So, here you can see that uh, all the date load of the building and all they are acting actually and uh, they are transferring to the foundation and foundation will have a reaction. So, this is very common for all the buildings and even for one story building as well. But at the same time, when you think of a increasing height as because with the increase, the lateral movement of a building will be more due to the wind pressure because uh, already we have discussed that with the increase that how uh, the wind pressure will increase. So, if you just uh, say this is the you know height and this is the wind pressure, so you can get this exponential curve and it will be a critical situation. Along with that, whenever you increase uh, the building and where the height to the base ratio is also very high and that time the seismic due to any seismic activity during earthquake, so it will be vulnerable. So, these two major uh, lateral load to be well taken care of by different structural system and how to minimize that with uh, the rigid or flexibility or with the hinge that we will discuss uh, in, in two lectures. So, in this case uh, like definitely we will think of uh, this lateral load and gravity load how that can be managed. Now, considering the material the steel the reinforced concrete or maybe the composite material or maybe some materials uh, which are in now in research stage can be applied to make the structure uh, strong and also uh, having good resistance against the lateral thrust. 
Now coming to the component already we have discussed, so we will not go into detail in this part, column will be the part where it will be responsible to transfer the axial load to the footing. So, this is mainly responsible. So, whatever the size of the column, uh, column that will be decided based on the uh, gravity load or the vertical load of the building. It accounts all rate load, the self weight of the material structure and as well as the live load. Then where is the beam? Uh, the second component, it has two purpose, one to transfer the load of the slab uh, to the column and then also it will uh, prevent the building initi uh, initially from the lateral uh, against the lateral force that means due to the wind uh, or the movement. Then shear wall is again uh, maybe a extended column uh, like in place of the column if you extend it. So, that will become a cantilever to the base uh, and that can um, be a good instrument for resisting against the lateral load. The basing is basically uh, to be placed uh, to you know connect to uh, the frame or giving more steepness to uh, more rigidity and steepness to your structure like this. And the core that we discussed that, um, that core for the high rise building th or the services that can be grouped together and make a core and normally it can be you know the main structural element of the building or it uh, be just as a service core. So, uh, we can place uh, the columns very close to the you know area, the central area or the core area that we decide, it need not to be core means always at the center and um, that can be made like a tubular structure or maybe it is just the shear walls. So, here based on the position of the core, we have four categories, one is the central core where you can see that, uh, that uh, you know this color, yellow color that being placed, this is the core the split core that can be like separated that entire core being distributed and they are put in different location. It can be a end core that it is being played somewhere uh, like uh, it may be something like the staircase or some, some you know important services that kept the separate or it may be something like you make a atrium like you have this void. So, basically uh, this particular white portion is the void part and then we have the core in uh, one side or two side or maybe in four side depending on the complexity of the structure depending on the span of the structure we may have multiple core as well. But uh, in order to make the structure very simple and uh, you know interior planning very simple mostly we can go with this uh, central core or sometimes in some uh, buildings we also have seen this atrium core. The application of the core uh, is very important for the high rise building and the decision on the core material like whether it will be the shear wall, the concrete shear wall or it may be the uh, shear struss made of steel or it may be just very closely placed column to make a tubular structure that we will be discussing not here in the next lecture uh, where we will be discussing on the exterior structure. So, uh, as we have discussed earlier uh, where we concluded uh, the last lecture that uh, when you categorize the four types of structure where the shear frames and then the partial tube or maybe tubular structure, those can be clapped or clustered into two category interior and exterior. So, what exactly they do mean here is the answer. So, in this case interior structure a system where the major part of the lateral load resisting system is located within interior of the building. So, whatever the structure which will be responsible for resisting uh, the lateral load that is located uh, at the interior side. So, here you can just uh, a representation uh, of this where the main you know structural elements at given at uh, you know at the center at uh, the interior of this particular floor and this is something where it is a 3D representation where this red uh, columns they are placed in, in you know inside in the interior. Where is in contradictory the exterior structure where the uh, like major load 
resisting structure are located at the periphery. So, you here instead of uh, making it at the center, this is placed at the periphery. But again you have to remember this is uh, mentioned that uh, the major part of the major part of that means when you make this uh, it, it will not say that uh, you can have this as a cantilever there is no requirement of any column. But uh, definitely when you make your structure and depending on the height on depending on the lateral pressure that it will encounter uh, we can decide upon the you know number and spacing the distance between these exterior columns. It may be not non-structural uh, column or may be not taking much load. So, uh, that can be something uh, very thin or maybe when we think the building is too high that we have to give both uh, your interior exterior together or you have to have a central core as well. So, then we can also go for that. But in this lecture as I mentioned earlier we will be only discussing on the interior structure and their different parts. We have seen uh, a pictorial illustration where different kind of interior structure been shown. So, we will be discussing the same in this lecture and here is that particular uh, image I was talking about there I skipped because uh, we will discuss here it in detail. So, if you see that uh, uh, here in the y axis it is given as a number of story. Uh, the number of floors you may say a standard floor and uh, here is basically the improvement of structural element. So, when you go with the based uh, hinge frame uh, you cannot really go uh, much because of the hinge condition where it will again have some you know uh, flexibility uh, it will allow some rotation uh, and bending and all. So, for some multi level parking and all we can have this kind of structure. Now, compared to that when you make a rigid structure, so it can be made of your concrete, it can be made of steel. So, basically when you go for steel structure as because steel will be very good for um, uh, your tensile uh, you know taking the tensile load and all. So, we can build little bit higher than the concrete and here also you can when you use the rigid concrete frame you can even go a little higher. So, 20 story, 30 story. So, these are some representation where we can really you know go very safely. Now, compared to that when you move towards a little bit uh, more height then it is very important to solidify or make your interior structure uh, uh, very strong and then basically the concrete shear wall is uh, you know uh, come, comes into picture and then along with that when we have this if we give uh, bracing added to that that means it will again give more protection against the lateral sway uh, of the building uh, due to the wind pressure and all. And then when you move forward the concrete shear wall and re, uh, steel rigid frame they combine. So, this is basically where uh, your steel straws or concrete straws they are interacting with the frame it can even uh, give you better result. I will show how and then uh, when you move further with the concrete shear wall plus concrete frame. So, that can be combined. So, we have uh, the core structure at the center at the same time if you see the plan. So, again you have uh, your concrete frame in the outside. In this case concrete shear wall is there, but steel frame are placed um, in exterior like in the outer periphery. And then uh, basically when you go and move to your outrigger. So, where in alternative uh, or maybe with a certain interval uh, we just provide the straws which will nothing but uh, the cantilever to the core uh, that will actually uh, you know allow building to go high and in because of this the bending of this building will be restricted. So, I will show one by one. So, if I move forward so, basically for uh, any uh, structure, structural system two important parameters are there. One is your moment resisting frames which will uh, resist the moment due to the lateral load and the other one is your shear straws and shear wall. So, these two components, these two components they are uh, playing the crucial role in any structural system. When you combine 
both of them together it will give you better result and we will see that how uh, that, that can be combined. But if we go for the classification of this interior structure, uh, there are 5 components. Component number 1 is your braced hinge frames, second is your rigid frames, third is your shear wall hinge frames and then shear wall frame interaction system where the uh, concrete or steel frame and then the shear straws both uh, they are actually you know combined and they perform in a better way and the outrigger system that uh, just I explained in this particular phenomena where uh, at different interval we provide some you know uh, what we call that horizontal uh, structure may be of straws, it may be made of concrete, may be made of steel, but that will give you a, a, a thickness compared to the normal beam and all some depth to that uh, beam or maybe we, we can use the build truss. Uh, this is I will explain uh, this when we take the example. Now, coming to the uh, braced hinge frame that I mentioned that uh, it will actually you know uh, connect those particular joints with the beam and column and can resist, but as because these are uh, hinge, uh, so that will not give uh, that particular uh, you know uh, advantage that the rigid frame can give. So, efficiently resist the lateral load by axial forces or shear stress member uh, that uh, being given here allow uh, cellular beams compared to the rigid frames as because the height is also very low and this bracing is taking care of uh, that movement. But the problem is uh, whenever you place this diagonal uh, at the exterior surface, so it will be little bit difficult to make the interior or the you know the outer facet and expensive diagonal connection. So, sometimes it may be like fixed end or sometimes we can use the dampers. So, dampers being used for the earthquake uh, resistance, uh, resistance structure that we have discussed uh, earlier uh, in that um, particular lecture, but this will have limitation and we can build up to say a uh, few story up to 10 story or something like that. Coming uh, moving forward coming to the rigid frames. So, here it basically a moment resisting frame uh, that consists of the horizontal uh, gator and vertical column. So, they are actually linked uh, uh, fixed very rigidly and they are coplanar. So, it is basically uh, linking them this uh, you know very typical grid structure. The size of the column is uh, mainly controlled by the gravity load that already I uh, explained to you that whatever the actual vertical load is being paid based on that the column size will uh, be decided. It may be uh, same throughout or it may change uh, when you go because the when you calculate the load based on the accumulation. So, load being added uh, then if you, uh, like your cumulative load at the bottom will be too much. So, we can have a larger section compared to the section the top, but depends on the structure other consideration as well uh, where the uniform cross section is taken up. Now, coming to the size of the uh, gators or the you know connection. So, uh, it is basically the steepness of the frame and it is ensured by uh, you know um, the what should be the acceptable uh, sway lateral sway of the building. Like there will be sway because if you go for say some high rise building there will be the sway and definitely there is a acceptable limit and based on that this uh, uh, the steepness and other thing will be controlled for your uh, horizontal members. Now, coming to the rigid frame structure here are two examples and here it is a typical plan where you can see typical plan and elevation where uh, the beam uh, your you know the gators and the columns being actually compiled. So, in this case if you see that this is uh, your in girls building in US that 16 story 65 building. So, here it is a very simple structure. If you just see from the exterior, so there are vertical members like this and then it is being connected. So, this is floor wise very uniformly designed and so as true for uh, this case as well. You can see that each floor with the you know connection this frame uh, 
uh, in both the cases the buildings is very straightforward. Uh, like if we just want to represent very uh, simple manner, so it is something like that where the rigid frame being used. Now, coming to the shear wall hinge frame where uh, it is not the connection, all uh, the connection being made with only the column and the gauges. So, here we in state of that at the core as interior structure uh, that we are discussing now, we use the shear wall. So, shear wall is basically uh, is maybe the RCC wall which will act as uh, basically as a cantilever to the base. So, it can sway. So, other structure is holding its uh, giving the support. So, main lateral force the this is being resisted by this core. So, reinforced concrete uh, planar solid or coupled shear walls. So, this is basically what I mentioned uh, helped to resist lateral force caused by the wind or earthquake. So, this will anchor uh, the building. So, uh, during the movement this code will control uh, the you know acceptable sway. Uh, either due to wind or even during earthquake. In the case of two or more coplanar shear walls, so it may be something where it is not the core, maybe in some of the buildings you will find that maybe at the corner uh, you know you have some portion the shear wall. So, then each, each of the shear wall will have some steepness, but when you add together the cumulative steepness is even more than the sum of individual. So, suppose if it individual it is giving 1, it is giving 1, it is giving 2, but when combinedly if it the equivalent uh, steepness is more than uh, 1 plus 1 plus 2 that 4. So, it should be more it will be more than 4. The hinge frame are used for uh, the interconnection. So, the other uh, connection to the exterior column is uh, basically to this. Then connecting beam force to the wall. So, all uh, whenever we instruct to this particular thing, so this beam will actually uh, you know uh, transfer the load to the shear wall and shear will act uh, like, uh, like then transfer the load to the ground. Now, coming to the example here we have uh, your two examples one from Australia and the other from US where you can see that. Uh, in this is basically the core and uh, how the other placed are that they are linked uh, very symmetrically with the very uh, symmetrical structure it is. So, it is making this uh, shear wall hinge frame which is basically the shear wall at the center and then this is the case. This is so true for this and we can go reasonably a good story 40 to 50 story uh, building for that. And if you search uh, for this building, you will get more details. So, I would suggest that you go through, you will get more information about that, how it works. Now, coming to the interaction, yes, so here it is basically uh, where you just use uh, your uh, um, frame, moment resistance frame. So, it will have a movement and then this is basically the shear stars or shear wall and then when you combine, so the combination of shear straws and shear walls with moment resistance frame, uh, in that case the upper part of the truss is restrained by the frame. Uh, the upper part is restrained by the frame because of the behavior and the lower part of the frame is restrained by the shear wall. So, the lower part uh, being restrained by this. So, this will act in a better manner and in this case two types are uh, or sub category we can have one is your brace rigid frames and other is your shear uh, wall rigid frame. So, uh, let us see. So, in this case if you see uh, this is the braced uh, rigid frames where effectively resist the lateral load by producing shear stress frame interaction system. This is common for both and this is example for Empire State Building New York and here also it is the uh, Seagram building both are very commonly used building examples in architecture, there this system being used. Moving forward the shear wall uh, rigid frames. So, in that case uh, instead of your braced uh, uh, frame at different interval, so here we use the shear wall. 
uh, and then uh, the same example that I have given. So, this is basically up to 17th floor, we will uh, see this phenomena of the brace rigid frame, but whereas from uh, 17 to 19th, 29th floor, we will get this uh, you know shear wall frame uh, interaction system. So, where the portion is being made of the shear wall of this building. Now, coming to the last category of this is basically the outriggers. In this case, outriggers serve to reduce the overturning moment of the core. So, here if you see that this is the core, this is in a tilted position, but uh, the original position is something like that. And if you have only uh, the you know slab, in that case it will bend more, but as because if you provide uh, some thickness. So, uh, the lean uh, suppose instead of that you just increase the thickness of this slab and uh, just um, uh, check that the movement during uh, your the lateral sway. So, it will be minimized. So, in this curve it has been shown that the moment uh, in core without trigger bracing uh, and then moment in the core without out trigger machine based on the height. This is the same building if you see that uh, how this can you know uh, take place. Transfer the reduced moment to the outer columns through the out triggers is uh, the property here. The out triggers are generally in form of trusses in steel structure or walls in concrete structure. So, it may be steel or it may be wall, but it to be placed at certain interval that in the beginning we have seen that uh, you know building where this is being placed along with the core. So, it is being placed at some you know maybe uh, five, uh, 5 floors interval or 10 floors interval. Coming to the example, this is uh, the example of Taipei. So, here you can see that uh, in different levels uh, in this section though it is not much clear, but you can see some of the places where this being used at different you know. Uh, interval. So, along with the code stars that we have, so also we have this kind of truss system. This is also called built truss. So, this will help the structure to go and if you see that now this is something with the interior structure and we can go up to 100 story building. If you go beyond that, so along with the interior structure, we should go for some exterior structure where the outer periphery uh, of uh, you know peri perimeter wise the floor perimeter uh, like uh, at the periphery, we have to provide some structural uh, members as well to resist again the lateral load. Now, this is another example where this is Jin Mao building in China. Here you can easily see this is the finished product, but here you can see that how uh, uh, this floor being managed. So, here also you can get some bracing, structural bracing that being made and also in this floor uh, it uh, is basically giving this truss which is made of concrete uh, and then it is giving this particular bale truss. So, here also you can see that uh, how this being made. So, in different floors it is being maintained. And finally, it is similar to this if you uh, compare this two example, it is the outrigger structure which will help uh, us to go uh, even for the larger height. So, this is all about the interior structure where we have seen this. So, if we just try to summarize, we have uh, the braised uh, hinge structure and then we have the shear wall. Then uh, also we have seen the shear wall or shear stars uh, is the same and we can use uh, concrete or steel to make this. Then you have your shear wall and then your frame interaction. Then also you have seen the outriggers and then uh, what I mentioned uh, I forgot to mention that is the rigid. frame. So, uh, when you just move from this to this, you can increase the height of the building and the complexity, the cost definitely it will increase, but at the same time uh, like in order to make your structure safe and to design as you desire. So, you should go for that, but it is all about the interior structure 
and why it is interior structure, we have to remember that major, major part of the lateral load resisting system is actually placed in the interior of the building. So, in terms of core uh, and then in order to improve it, sometimes you have seen that in the outriggers that along with the core, so we also go for these outriggers which will help uh, or resist the sway to certain control and that can be made uh, with something uh, with the truss that we have seen in Taipei and just this example also Jin Mao building, we have seen this. So, with this uh, I conclude this lecture here and uh, we will be looking uh, forward to the discussion on the exterior structure, then we can see the difference between these two and what are the other applications and some examples and then we will move to the case study of different mega structure uh, in from the different parts of the world. Uh, so, again uh, for the study material you can uh, actually uh, go through this book, this is very uh, useful. If you have access to this book through the library or some uh, you know subscription, so you can get uh, enough information or else uh, you can uh, go through the links provided to the slides in relevant slides, so that you can get more information about that. So, here whatever we have discussed mostly uh, these are being controlled, uh, the information many of the information is available in the website of your council on uh, tall buildings and urban habitat. So, please browse through their website and you will get more information about that, the devolution and different category of the buildings, the type uh, and then you just add on more examples. So, these are very few that I have shown you with the stipulated time, but there are uh, a good number of buildings that is coming into the category. So, you just try to figure it out based on the structural component, based of the composition of different uh, members that which category of interior structure that building uh, fall under. So, with that uh, again I thank you uh, all to take part and we will be uh, discussing the next on in the lecture number 38 that is your high rise structural component part 2 and we will be discussing on the exterior structure and their application. So, uh, till then bye bye, thank you.